this video, we're learning how to find a percent of a number using an equation. So the top of our screen says, to find a percent of a number, first change the percent into a fraction or a decimal, and then multiply the result by the number. So before we jump into number one, I want to make it clear that we cannot put percents into equations. So before we write our equation, we have to turn our percent into a fraction or decimal. So I'm going to say that one more time. You cannot put percents into an equation. You can only put fractions and decimals. So I'll show you guys what I mean by looking at example one. So example one says, what is 60% of 90? So I'm going to write this as an equation. So what is going to be what I'm solving for? So that's going to be my x. So I'm going to say x is always means equal in math. So if I say like x is 5, that just means x equals 5. So we're going to have x equals. And now we cannot put a percent into our equation, so we need to change it to a fraction or a decimal. I'm going to use decimals for this video. So to change 60% into a decimal, we move the decimal point two places to the left or you divide by 100, you're going to get 0 0.6. Of in math always means multiplication, so 0 0.6 times. And then 90 is just going to stay as it is. It's just a number, so we're just going to put 90 in as 90. So basically what we do is what it says at the top of the screen, which is change the percent into a fraction or decimal. So we change 60% into a decimal and then we multiply it by the number that we're finding the percent of. So we multiply it by 90. So now what I want to do is just simplify the right side of this. So I have to multiply 90 by 0 0.6. So I'll do that over here on the right. So I'm going to use stacked multiplication, but you guys can also use box if you prefer. So remember when we're multiplying decimals, just ignore the decimal point at first, and then I'll show you guys how to put the decimal point in at the end. So it's like we're multiplying 90 by 6. So 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 9 is 54, and then we put a 0 down here, and then 0 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 9 is 0. You don't technically need that second line. We're going to add these two lines and we get 540. And now we need to see how many digits we had to the right of our decimal points in our original numbers that we were multiplying. So we didn't have any digits to the right of our decimal point in 90 but we had one digit to the right of our decimal point in 0 0.6. So we want one digit to the right of our decimal point in our answer. So we get that x is equal to 54, which means that 60% of 90 is 54. So now let's take a look at example two, which says what is 15% of 40? So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna translate this into an equation. And technically, you guys don't have to make the equation. You could just multiply the percent in decimal or fraction form by the number. But I want to show you guys how to write an equation because it's going to be useful for solving other types of percent problems. So what is always what we're solving for? So that's always going to be our variable. So we're going to have x. Is is always equal. So x equals 15%. We need to change to a fraction or a decimal. I'm going to change it to a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left. So I get 0 0.15. Of is always multiplication. And 40 is just a number, so it's just going to stay as it is. So we get that x is equal to 0 0.15 times 40. And now we have to do that multiplication. So I'll do it over here. 0.15 times 40. 0 times 5 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. On the second line, we have to put a 0 to start. 4 times 5 is 20, put the 0 down here, carry the 2. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. 4 times 0 is 0. Add these two lines, we get 0, 6, 0, 0. In our original numbers, we have a total of two numbers to the right of our decimal point. So we want two numbers to the right of our decimal point in our answer. So we get 6. So we get that x is equal to 6. And now I should have said this for the first one, so we'll talk about it now with both problems. You always want to mentally check that your answer makes sense. So if we're looking at number 1, we were finding 60% of 90. And 60% is more than 50%, right? And 50% is a half. 
So you want to think, what's half of 90? And it's 45. So our answer should be a little bit bigger than 45, which it is. So we know we are at least in the ballpark. For number two, you guys may know that to find 10% of a number, you just divide the number by 10. So 10% of 40 is 4. So 15% should be bigger than that, but not too much bigger. And 6 is a little bit bigger than 4, so we know that we're at least in the right ballpark. Let's do a couple more examples. So taking a look at example 3, we have what is 250% of 36. And we're going to do the same thing that we did for the first two problems. So we want to translate this into an equation. So what is our variable? So we're going to say x is is equal 250%. We have to change into a fraction or a decimal. I'm going to change it into a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left or dividing by 100. So I'm going to get 2.5 of is multiplication and 36 is just a number so we keep it as is. So now I just need to multiply 2.5 by 36. So I'll do that over here. 6 times 5 is 30 so we put the 0 here, carry the 3. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 3 is 15. Moving to the second line I put a 0 on the right. And now I do 3 times 5, which is 15, carry the 1, and I cross out this 3. And 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. And now I need to add these two lines. So I get 0, 5 plus 5 is 10, so I'll put the 0 here, carry the 1. And 1 plus 1 plus 7 is going to give us 9. And now we have to figure out where to put the decimal point. We have one digit to the right of our decimal point in our original number, so we want one digit to the right of our decimal point in our answer. So we get 90, so we get x is equal to 90, which means 250% of 36 is 90, and we just want to double check that our answer makes sense. So 250% is going to be of 36 is going to be more than 36, because 250% is more than 100%. It's also going to be more than double of 36 because 200% is double. So if we double 36, we get 72, and our answer is bigger than 72, so we at least know we're in the right ballpark. So let's take a look at example 4, which is what is 16% of 300? So we're going to do the same thing we've been doing, translate this into an equation. So what is our variable? is is equals we want to change 16 percent into a fraction or decimal I'll change it into a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left so I get 0 0.16 of means multiplication and 300 is a number so we're going to leave it as is so over here on the right I'm going to multiply 300 by 0 0.16 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, and 6 times 3 is 18. Put a 0 for our second line, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 3 is 3. And we don't actually have to multiply that last 0 because it'll just end up with a bunch of zeros. So I'm going to skip that step for this one. And we're going to add straight down. 0 plus 0 is 0, we get another 0. 8 plus 0 is 8, 1 plus 3 is 4. And now we have two digits in, or to the right of our decimal point in our original numbers. So we want two digits to the right of our decimal point in our answer. So we get 48. So we get the x is equal to 48, which means 16% of 300 is 48. And we're just going to mentally check that that makes sense. So 16% is bigger than 10%, and 10% is just dividing the number by 10. So 300 divided by 10 is 30. We are bigger than 30. You could also check that it's less than 20%, which is just double of 10%. So we said 10% of 300 is 30, so 20% of 300 is 60, 16% is in the middle of those two, and 48 is in the middle of 30 and 60, so we know that we're in the right ballpark. Let's work through two more examples just to make sure we've really got this down. 
So for these last two examples, I encourage you guys to pause the video and try them on your own, and then you can watch me work through them to make sure that you've solved them correctly. So for number five, we have what is 80% of 450? So we want to translate this into an equation. So what is our variable? So it's x is is equals. We need to change 80% into a fraction or decimal. I'm going to change it into a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left or dividing by 100, which will get me 0 0.8. Of is always multiplication. And 450 is a number, so we will just keep it as is. So now we need to multiply 0 0.8 by 450. So I'll do that over here on the right. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 5 is 40. So I carry the 4. 8 times 4 is 32. And 32 plus 4 is 36. I don't need the second line because it's just zero times a bunch of things, so it'll just end up as a bunch of zeros. So now I have to figure out where my decimal point goes, and I know that in my original two numbers I had one digit to the right of my decimal point. So I want one digit to the right of my decimal point in my answer, so I'm going to put my decimal there. So I get that x is equal to 360, which means 80% of 450 is equal to 360, and we want to mentally check that this makes sense. So 50% of 450 is going to be half of 450. If you don't actually want to find half of 450, you can just kind of ballpark it. So half of 400 is 200, so we know half of 450 is a little bit more than 200. 80% is going to be more than 50%, but it's going to be less than 100%. So it's somewhere between like 225 and 450, and our answer is between those, so we know that we're in the right ballpark. And finally, taking a look at our last example, we have what is 110% of 30? So let's translate this into an equation. So what is our variable? So x is is equals. We want to change 110 into a fraction or decimal. I'm going to change it into a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left to get 1.10, which is the same as 1.1. Of is always multiplication. And 30 is a number, so we'll just keep it as is. Over here on the right, we're going to multiply 1.1 by 30. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Move to the second line, so we put a 0. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 1 is 3. When we add these two rows, we get 0, 3, 3. And now we have to figure out where our decimal point goes. We have one digit to the right of our decimal point in our original numbers, so we want one digit to the right of our decimal point in our answer. So we get that x is equal to 33, and we need to see if this makes sense. So we know that 110 is a percent is a little bit more than 100 percent, and 100 percent of 30 is just 30. Our answer is a little bit more than 30, so we know we're in the right ballpark. So hopefully that video helped you guys learn how to find percents of a number using an equation. If you're looking for more practice with problems like this, check out the link in our description. We have linked a free worksheet for you guys that has answers at the end so you guys can practice more of what you've learned.